What's going on? It's Suck and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the Entry 2023 M3 powered 14 inch MacBook Pro. I will soon be uploading a number of videos comparing this MacBook to the others and comparing them. Also, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So before I start, I do want to mention that the specification for the MacBook that I used will be left down below in this video's description. Also, I do want to make you guys aware that I did manage to test the 512 gigabyte and the one terabyte models of this MacBook Pro. So be sure to stick around to see the results of that. So anyway, the first benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was Geekbench 4. Geekbench is good as it runs a number of different tests and algorithms and depending on how they've performed and how long it took to perform them, it'll then give a score. So for this test, I got a single core score of 7,756 and a multi-core score of 32,542. I also performed Geekbench 4's graphics test using the 10 core GPU found in this M3 chip. It's also worth noting that I have already tested the MacBook Pro with the M3 Max with its 40 core graphics chip. So if you do want to go ahead and check out that video, I will leave it linked down below in this video's description or alternatively, you can click the card in the top right corner to go and check out that video. But when running the OpenCL test through Geekbench 4, I got a score of 132,546 and when running the metal test, I got a score of 111,199. The next testing application which I ran was once again from Geekbench but this time from their slightly newer version, Geekbench 5, which has an increased amount of tests which are further designed to tax the machine when compared to Geekbench 4. So this test was once again ran through Rosetta as it's not natively available to run on Apple Silicon. So for this test, I got a single core score of 1722 and a multi-core score of 8151 and when running the compute test through Geekbench 5 I got an OpenCL score of 30468 and when running the metal test I got a score of 32307. The next test I ran was once again from Geekbench, this time from their newest set of tests found in Geekbench 6. So once again starting off with the CPU test, I got a single core score of 3168 and a multi core score of 12002. And when running the compute tests, I got an open TL score of 30575 and a metal score of 47668. Sticking to the trend of testing the CPU, I then ran Cinebench 2024. Now Cinebench 2024 is their newest set of tests which are designed to test the multi-core and single core performance of this CPU. So for this test, I got a single core score of 139 points, a multi-core score of 680, which indeed gives us a ratio of 4.88. I then ran a slightly older version of Cinebench, this being Cinebench R20. Now for this test, I got a score of 2,795. And when running Cinebench R23, I got a single core score of 1,899 and a multi-core score of 10,446, which gives us a ratio of 5.5. ,5. I then ran the V-Ray test and got a score of 6,580. So on this entry MacBook Pro, I wanted to see how the SSD would perform. So I ran the disk speed test from Blackmagic Design and with this I got a write speed of 2679.7 megabytes per second and when reading from this SSD it got speeds of 1064.2 megabytes per second. I also ran the Aja Systems test to see how this SSD would perform. Now for this test I got a write speed of 2801 megabytes per second and read speeds of 1246 megabytes per second. I also ran a network speed test and got download speeds of 284 megabits per second and upload speeds of 101 megabits per second. 
I then ran Nova Bench 2. Now Nova Bench ran on this MacBook Pro, which was weird as it didn't run on the M3 Max MacBook Pro. But nevertheless, when running Nova Bench 2, I got a score of 2053. So sticking to the trend of testing the 10 core GPU found in this M3, I ran several tests from 3 d Mark. Now starting off with the wildlife test, which was slightly useless as it managed to max out this test with it also coming in with 119.8 frames per second. And when running the wildlife stress test, I got a higher score of 20,008 and a lower score of 19,974, which said decrease in performance of less than 0.2% certainly quite good. So I then ran the wildlife extreme test. Now for this test I got a score of 8156 and I also managed to get 48.8 frames per second on average. Now these scores certainly are better than what we had seen in the 15 inch MacBook Air with its 10 core M2 chip with it scoring 6804 with an average frame rate of 40.7 frames per second. I then ran the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. Now with this test, the best score that I achieved was 8,158, whilst the lowest was 8,086, which is a decrease in performance of less than 0.9%. So just to throw comparison to the M2 chip found in that 15 inch MacBook Air, the best score the MacBook Air achieved was 6811, whilst the lowest was 5174. So you can clearly see that the M3 chip within this MacBook Pro is performing much better under load. Now this is to be expected considering that the MacBook Pro has a proper cooling system, whereas the MacBook Air is completely passively cooled. I also wanted to test the ray tracing capabilities of this MacBook Pro's M3 chip, so I ran the solar test from 3D Mark. Now with this, I got a score of 13,062, with it managing to average 49.7 frames per second. And running the solar based stress test, the highest score I got here was 13,051, with the lowest being 13,004, which is a decrease in performance of around 0.4%. Although this does not compare to the 31,000 plus scores that we got from the M3 Max. Honestly, after watching this video, you might want to go and check out the previous video from the M3 Max, as I'm sure it'll probably open your eyes as to how much more powerful that chip is. The next graphics application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was GFX Bench Metal, which is once again designed to test the performance of the 10 graphics cores found in the M3's GPU. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which range from both higher and lower levels of intensity. Now in the interest of saving time, I have calculated the average. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 243.27 frames per second, whereas the lower was 200 and 91.67 frames per second. When running the Antutu HTML browser benchmark, I got a score of 92,312. And when running the Speedometer 2.0 test, I got a score of 591.1. The next set of graphics benchmarks which I ran came from Unigen. The first of these that I ran was the Heaven benchmarking test. Now this was run at the resolution of 1512 by 982 and with this test I got a score of 2695 with an average frame rate of 107 frames per second. And when lowering the resolution to 1400 by 900 I got a score of 2942 with an average frame rate of 116.8 frames per second. The next benchmarking test which I ran from Unigen Benchmarking Tools was their Valley test. Now with this test I also ran it at 1512 by 982 pixels and for this test I got a score of 4652 with an average frame rate of 111.2 frames per second. And like I did with the Heaven test, when lowering the resolution to 1400 by 900, I got a score of 4777 and an average frame rate of 114.2 frames per second. The next graphics test which I ran was from Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I ran their benchmarking test at 1920 by 1200 and medium settings. Now for this test, I got a score of 6136 with an average frame rate of 39 frames per second. 
I also increased the resolution to 2160 by 1440 and got a score of 3967 with an average frame rate of 25 frames per second. And when lowering down to 1440 by 960, I got a score of 8651 with an average frame rate of 55 frames per second. I then ran a number of renders through Blender and the first of these using the CPU was the classroom scene. Now for this it took 8 minutes and 6 seconds to complete. It's also worth noting that I did try using the GPU and for some reason it didn't run the test. In fact, it gave me an error message telling me that the system had run out of memory. I did close the program multiple times and even restarted the Mac and I still got this error message. So I'll continue to test it on this machine and when I get some updated scores, I'll leave them down below in this video's description. I also rendered the BMW scene using the CPU and this took 3 minutes and 35 seconds to complete. Now the interesting thing is when using the GPU, it took 39 seconds to complete, which certainly is quite impressive. And to put things into perspective, the M3 Max chip found in the 16 inch MacBook Pro with its 40 graphical cores, which cost like two and a half times more than this machine, completed this test in 24 seconds, so it's about 15 seconds faster. Which means that the M3 chip is approximately 40% slower. I exported some video footage to H.264 at both Full HD 1920 by 1080 and 4K 3840 by 2160 using Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off. So the time taken to export the Full HD project was 46 seconds, whilst it took 2 minutes and 51 seconds to complete the 4K export. So that'll be all for today's video. Of course, if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, then be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. As I, as I previously mentioned, I am going to be uploading a number of videos over the coming weeks and months, comparing these MacBooks to even the previous models. So you don't want to be missing out on any of those videos. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.